Now, if we want to find the binding energy for lithium-7, we're going to consider how the mass changes when we go from lithium-7 nucleus to three protons and four neutrons. In order to do this, we need to use very, very precise masses. We're going to use for the mass of a proton 1.007277 atomic mass units, and for the mass of a neutron, 1.008665. Therefore, we're going to have to use a much more precise mass for lithium-7 than just 7. Looking at my chart for the properties of light nucleides, looking at lithium-7, we find it has a mass of 7.016004 AMU. Atomic mass units are based on carbon-12 having a mass of 12, and everything else is adjusted relative to that. Alright, we have this mass. When we break it apart, we get all this. If I want to find the total mass there, I'm going to find 3 times the mass of a proton plus 4 times the mass of a neutron3 times 1.007277 plus 4 times 1.008665 gives me 7.056491 AMU. The mass of our reactant is less than a mass of our products. It appears that we are creating matter. We're not creating matter. The energy we are inputting in order to break this nucleus apart is converted to matter. If I want to figure out how much energy it, it takes, I need to figure out what my change in mass is. The change in mass is frequently called the mass decrement. So if I want to find the difference between these two values, I'm simply going to subtract them. So the answer I have in my calculator, minus 7.016004, gives me a change in mass of 0 0.040487 atomic mass units. We're getting there. Now I want to find the energy associated with that. When I said that we were going to use Isaac Newton's equation, E equals mc squared, we are, but we're going to do a slightly different form of it. If I plug in the mass in kilograms, I'm going to multiply by the speed of light squared, and I'm going to get the energy in joules. I don't want to convert this to kilograms. So we have a shortcut that we use, which is I'm going to take the mass decrement, and to get the energy, I'm going to take that change in mass and multiply by 931 MeV per AMU. MeV per AMU. MeV is mega electron volts. It's the amount of energy in one electron. So taking this change in mass and plugging it in there, 0.040487 times 931, gives me a change in mass of 37.7 MeV. This is the binding energy for lithium-7. So for lithium-7, we're going to write the Be equals 37.7 MeV. If I wanted the binding energy per nucleon, it's not a hard thing to do. It requires that I know what a nucleon is. A nucleon is something that lives in a nucleus. There are three protons and four neutrons, so this has seven nucleons. So taking 37.7 and dividing by 7 gives me 5.38 MeV per nucleon. And that is the other portion of our answer. When we are comparing one atom to another, it is difficult to just compare binding energy because the larger atoms are automatically going to have a higher binding energy. But if we convert it to binding energy per nucleon, like I did here, it's a way of us relating the stability of one atom or one nucleus to the stability of another nucleus. A higher BEE, -E, I'm sorry, a BE per nucleon means that an atom is more stable than another atom.
I want you to try to find the binding energy and the binding energy per nucleon of carbon 11 and then come back for the solution.